the five biggest mistakes that kill attraction. Have you ever wondered, am I doing things, saying things that kill attraction? Is that the reason why he ran away? Why he's not texting or calling me back? Well, check this out. I'm Monty Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And look, this is the channel where we magnetize your man so that the man you want, desires, and most importantly, pursues you forever. If you like what I share, what I wear, or anything else about in this background, this video, then give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe for more juicy and impactful videos coming your way. And lastly, listen until the very end for a surprising edit bonus for you. So let's go ahead and dive right into the five major mistakes women make that are highly unattractive. Unfortunately, they kill attraction. Number five is being overly critical. Now, what you have to know when you interact with a man or with a person, right, is nobody likes to be criticized all the time. Nobody likes to be told all the time what's wrong with them. Now, where this usually comes from is, of course, you having an overly critical parent. And then the overly critical parent becomes your internal dialogue. So how you were treated on the outside, that's now how you start treating yourself on the inside. So if you had a parent who said, you're such an idiot, you know, you got to put way more effort forward, right? You're not that smart, like, you know, uh, whatever it is, right? Like, don't be so arrogant, whatever the case may be then you have that internal dialogue. And as soon as you gain confidence inside of yourself or the other person, right? Like the man is actually starting to feel good about himself, you actually become critical. Another reason why you could become overly critical is because you actually don't feel good enough. So you unconsciously want to put yourself in a superior position to feel better, right? If you actually feel like, wow, the man is actually like, you know, on a pedestal, right? He's actually better than me. Then this will occur as well. And that's what I have actually done with my husband accidentally, unconsciously, right? Because I was like, you know, I'm not feeling good enough for him. So then I actually start to criticize him. And I also make misinterpretations when he gives me loving feedback and call that being critical. So pay attention to that. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, let me know where are you watching from. Another massive attraction killer is people pleasing. Now, of course, you developed a people pleasing aspect because you didn't get your needs met as a child, right? Like chances are you grew up as an anxious attachment style. That means sometimes you got the, the, uh, the bonding experience with your parents and sometimes you didn't, right? So life became like a gamble. So your strategy, pleasing the other person, your strategy becomes focusing on the other person. However, there's a couple of things wrong with this. Number one, like you will never actually be honest and authentic because you don't want to lose the other person, right? So, you know, if they want to go eat Italian, then out of the sun, you like Italian, even though you hate spaghetti, right? Or like you actually agree to a vacation to go to, even though I never wanted to go to that country, right? So you actually cause like a lot of trust loss in the relationship. And then eventually, of course, that's a total killer, right? Because the partner's actually like, oh, I don't really trust this person. I don't really attract to them. They're not really respecting themselves. I'm going to walk the opposite direction. Now, the other problem that it is with people pleasing is that you are actually abandoning yourself. So you are handing a man a resume how to treat you, which is abandoning you. And that's exactly what he starts to do. And he will also start to walk all over you. Number three is making him responsible for your ex's mistakes. And I see this quite often that a woman has not been treated well. She comes out of a marriage, out of a relationship with a narcissist, with an emotionally abusive, emotionally unavailable man. And then if there's just one aspect of the new guy that she attracted into her life that reminds her of how her ex treated her or how much he talked about himself on the first date that she then generalizes, right? You generalize like, oh, that must mean that he's a narcissist, right? Like, oh, he has confidence. That must mean that he's a narcissist, right? Like, oh, he gives me a gift right in the beginning. Oh, that must be love bombing. So really being mindful with making, don't make him responsible 
for your ex's mistakes, right? If you have trust issues, you can't put that all on him. He can't heal all of your wounds. You also have to do that for yourself. For example, when I met my husband, Brody, um, I certainly, you know, had like disappointing experiences in the past, but I said, you know what? Um, instead of me becoming actually anxious, putting the responsibility onto you to heal me, I will actually pull back and source, source myself, right? Soothe myself. And of course, that didn't mean that he was distancing himself from me, but he was also curious what I found out in the process. But what I didn't do is like, I didn't expect him to be like, you know, rescuing me, right? Like I had to actually learn to rescue myself. Now, if you like this content so far, again, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Number two is too much technology. And this is, has to be said because I see this all the time when I'm out and about. I see the man and the woman both on their phones. What? That's a date, right? Or you're on a date and the phone rings or like you see like a, a yellow or colorful, um, you know, like color pop into the screen of the other person. And it's just really disrespectful. It's very distracting. And it honestly destroys attraction because attraction is something that happens organically. So technology is really mechanic. So even if you meet online, it's really important to not continue with texting, for example, but actually to getting on the phone, right? Talking to each other, hearing each other's voice, feeling each other's energy, right? When you go out, so it's tr super, super important because otherwise you end up in a sort of mechanical world that there's not a lot of attraction there. It's very like mental, it's very on the surface and it's very bland. It's very like boring, right? And it's also very predictable, which are all attraction killers. And finally, number one is codependency. Now I want you to do something, take two magnets and put them in a drawer. So obviously they will be totally drawn to each other, right? They will be magnetized to each other. However, if you wait a couple of days and then pull out the drawer and look at the magnets, they will actually be apart from each other. Why is that? Well, because they will actually have neutralized each other because they were merged so much together that they new, no longer have their polarity. The same is true in codependency. If you have only the couple identity and there's, that's all there is and you're merging together and you're spending every minute and every hour together, you're texting each other 10 times a day, right? Like, and falling into the trap of codependency, then the relationship will hit a plateau. It gets really boring and it will ultimately kill attraction. However, if you're able to also foster the individual identity, right? Like the hobbies that you like, the friends that you have, the places where you want to travel to, the interests that you have, a workshop that you go to by yourself, right? Like then there will always be fresh nourishing food, so to say, for the couple identity and you will continue to grow. Now, before I go into my bonus, I have a question for you. What are some red flags you have seen from romantic partners you have dated in the past? Let me know. And finally, for the bonus, trust issues. And let me tell you, this is really important because it's not so much about the trust issues itself, but what trust issues can lead to. Trust issues can lead to unnecessary jealousy, right? Which of course then communicates to the partner I don't trust you. You're not a person of quality, of integrity, right? Because why would I not trust you? You know what I mean? Like I must already think that you are a bad person, that you could be lying, that you could be cheating. And that is like really disrespectful to a guy, right? And it's also disrespectful to you as well. Also how trust issues can show up is actually not showing anything of yourself. You're not sharing your own emotions, your own secrets, right? Like your own fears. And with that, there's no like authenticity. There's no depth. There's no transparency. And over time, the attraction will be killed because there's nothing new there, right? There's no, what we call the edge. The edge really comes from being vulnerable. But if you have trust issues, then you will be uh, like 
it, it'll, it'll just uh, plateau. And finally, if you have trust issues, you can also become super controlling, right? And you can you can become bossy. You can step into your masculine all the time, and you can even emasculate the man. So you want to really watch out for those trust issues. What do you want to do instead? You want to learn how do I trust myself, right? Where am I? You know, telling myself white lies and then don't follow through. Maybe I promise myself to go to the gym or to go swimming or to do something and then I actually don't do it. So I actually already know the promises I make to myself, I usually break, right? So how can you actually shift that and develop a level of self-trust to yourself? Now, if you want to learn a 30-second trick on how to make any man desire you, then hop on over to triggerhisdesire.com. The link is also in the description below. And if you haven't done so already, watch next five real reasons why men respond to distance in love. Lots of love, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.